Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. Orthotics and insoles with high level runners. You know, I'm not sure that there's a data set out there that actually touches on whether elite runners are more likely to use insoles and inserts versus uh, the average person. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably less just because if you're, if you're a professional runner or if that's like your main job, you're likely doing all sorts of like little things that kind of come along with the training to maintain uh, foot health and strength in these areas. So there's a good chance that you have a lot of resources and a lot of time available to you outside of somebody who is, you know, trying to work a 50 hour week and train for a race and has a family and everything else that goes with it. There's just a lot of like necessary things that uh, would get in the way of possibly addressing these things before they come problems. And then you find yourself in a situation where you would need a tool like an insert or a, an orthotic in order to kind of maintain the lifestyle or get through an injury, so to speak. So if I had to guess, I would say it's probably the lower percentage, but then again, you also have the variable that, you know, professional runners are probably doing more of the set activity. So they may be kind of pushing their limits physically a little further, which could welcome some injuries if they get a little bit too far towards the risk side of risk reward and end up needing or using some of those things. Other thing to consider too, is if you're a professional athlete, uh, likely you're going to be a lot more resistant to taking time off if it's a minor injury. And I think things like orthotics and insoles can oftentimes be great tools to help you navigate that time frame to allow you to keep doing the activity that is, uh, in a professional athlete's case, paying the bills without further hindering that specific injury or allowing them to kind of close the gap between the injury occurring and getting it back to a hundred percent. This is where I see these things. I think a lot of times when people think of inserts and insoles, they think of or inserts and orthotics, they think of them as something that is permanent. Like I hurt my foot or I have low arches or I have something going on with my foot. I need this thing in my shoe in order to participate in this activity. And granted, there are going to be a certain percentage of the population of people for whatever reason, maybe they have like a discrepancy in leg length, or maybe they have some sort of thing that's a more uh, chronic injury where just the reality for them is they have to have these devices in their shoes because no matter what they do, in, in, in strengthening and mechanics and thing like things like that, it's just not going to clear up the issue and they're going to need to use that custom orthotic or something for the rest of their, their running. And in that case, those things are great because this, that opens up the door an activity for that person that they otherwise may not be able to participate in. And I think that's, that's really where these type of things shine. The other area where I think these things shine is kind of what I've been talking about, uh, so far, which is things happen. You know, We push our bodies sometimes past our limit and things flare up. And when those happen, some, some inserts can, can help limit that discomfort and allow you to continue training or get back to training when there's like a weakness in one side or the other, or just when things have been uh, a little bit atrophied after taking some time off, or you're coming back from an injury and you want to kind of baby a specific area because it's behind the rest of your body. I keep a pair of orthotics or not orthotics of insoles around for stuff like that. So like if I had something where I I tweak something in my foot and that insert takes that pain away and allows me to kind of continue the training while I address that situation, that's a perfect situation. The next question you should be asking though, is what is the removal of that? How do you get away from that and eventually not have to use that or rely on that permanently because the more structure we add to our footwear, essentially the bigger the cast we're building around that area of our body, which is going to reduce its ability to get strong and resilient. So when you think of these things as kind of like casts that are going to help us get healthy again, but not something we want to have permanently, we're thinking along the right lines. So Generally speaking, I think focusing on lower leg and foot strength is going to be a really, really good start strategy to minimize the amount of insole and orthotic use you might need to use over your running lifespan. Uh, 
or in general, avoid them as much as possible. So things like doing some lower profile shoes or even some barefoot work from time to time. And you definitely want to look at this as I'm an individual and you start where I'm at. So just like if you went into the weight room and decided you wanted to get stronger in your upper body, you wouldn't go there and find the strongest person in the gym and just say, Hey, I'm just going to follow you around and lift exactly the same weight for the exact same amount of reps and volume as you're doing and assume that's going to go well. You'd get injured. You would be starting way ahead of where you're ready for, and that's going to cause issues. You want to think about your lower leg and feet muscles and just everything that goes along down there the same way. If you're someone who has very weak feet and very weak lower legs uh, for whatever reason, maybe you just worn built up shoes and things for a long time and you want to strengthen those, you might just want to start really slow. It might be something as simple as like making it a little more frequent that you're just walking around like barefooted on your socks around the house at first, just to activate those muscles and kind of put your body through that range of motion and let those areas kind of catch up a bit. And then gradually phase in a little more activity once your body has responded and adapted to that. So things like foot and ankle exercises, strengthening exercises and mobility stuff. I think this is where like bands can be very useful. You can like anchor a band to like a door frame and do all sorts of different like foot and ankle flexions to really strengthen those areas. Things like jump rope can be really effective in strengthening feet and ankles, uh, adding a little bit of barefoot or low profile shoe work in. And again, just like walking around and doing the strength process, you want to start very slow. So if you've never done this before and have a, have a history of wearing built up protective shoes, inserts and orthotics and things like that, it might be something as simple as wearing a lower profile shoe for like a like some, some strides or something before your workout and just assessing the next day, how you feel. If those areas are feeling sore or a little fatigued, let that heal and rest up and then get stronger. And before reproducing the, that activity again, in order to kind of inch your way along to the point where over the course of months or even years, you build really strong lower legs and feet, and you're able to tolerate, uh, you know, more activity there. So, if I want to kind of like generally sum this up, I think the sweet spot is getting your lower legs and feet as strong as you can. Then once you do that, start relying on things like more supportive shoes or higher cushion shoes, insoles and things like that. When you're asking your body to go beyond what it's ready for. So being an ultra marathon runner, this is kind of the norm on race day. On race day, we're sort of asking our body to go beyond what it's really technically ready for from training, because you're just not running say a hundred miles in a single shot often enough for you really to kind of like get to a point where your body is going to be like super resilient to that and feel great at the end. So a scenario like that can be great where, you know, maybe in order to make miles 80 to a hundred, a little more tolerable, you're going to use things like a little more cushioned shoe or an insert or something like that to protect an area that could potentially be weaker than other areas of your body. So you're not limiting your potential by having one area of your body break down faster than the others. And that's going to be a very individual question. I think like even when we're talking about ultra marathons, you can build up really strong lower legs and feet and be able to tolerate a pretty low profile shoe. Um, in fact, I've done some hundred milers and really like essentially cross country racing flats uh, minimalist shoes and things in the past. So it is doable, but it is also something where it took me about a year to really kind of build up the tolerance to even be comfortable enough to try something like that. So it's not something where you want to just toss out your shoes and grab a pair of minimalist shoes right out the gate or start running barefoot on with, without ever trying it before and, and expect it to go really well you know, that, that might be like your end target, but be patient with yourself and let yourself like go with it. Eventually, once you do get those strong lower legs and feet though, I think the move at that point is kind of follow the principle of, I did the hard work to get this strong. Now it's going to require less stimulus to maintain it. And that's your opportunity to do what I call like build a shoe quiver, or like, I guess you could include insoles with this, where you have like 
a series of different approaches that you use for different types of workouts or different points in your training. So for example, I might go and do some short intervals at the track, which I would like to have like I'm a, a light, low profile, real flexible shoe to use for something like that. Uh, then the next day I might be going out for an easy training, like 60 minute easy run or something like that. You know, maybe my, my lower legs are a little sore from that track workout the day before. So I might opt for like a balanced cushion, more moderate to high cushioned training shoe for that 60 minute easy run. So I can let the area of my body that's a little more sore kind of catch up and maintain that strength that I've developed over time. So I don't necessarily need to be like going out with something that is like super minimalist every day, regardless of whether it's easy, hard, moderate, long, short, or otherwise, you can use what I like to call a shoe quiver with that sort of setup kind of once you get there. So ease into it. Once you kind of built up real strong legs and lower bodies, that's going to keep you more injury resistant over time. And then use a variety of tools to kind of maximize your training potential from there. That kind of makes sense. All right. So uh, if, if, if I didn't touch on something in this topic that someone wants me to hit on, shoot me a note, happy to kind of go back and uh, chat about it in a future episode. Um, also, it might be worth, uh, for those of you who want a little more of a deep dive into lower leg feet issues, check out the episode I did with Dr. Emily Schleichel. Uh She is a doctor who has done a lot with uh, lower leg and feet strengthening and things like that. And we did kind of a deep dive into you know, her take on some of that stuff. So if you're looking for maybe a little bit of a higher level PhD conversation around this versus my opinions, then that would be a great episode to check out. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. 